When organic halides, such as bromides or iodides, react with magnesium metal, they generate compounds known as Grignard reagents. Grignard reagents are very strong bases and react with water or the oxygen in the air. As a result, they must be prepared under anhydrous, anaerobic conditions with dry solvents. For this reason, all of the glassware used in your Grignard reaction must be extremely dry. Be sure to place your glassware in the oven in the lab at least one hour before starting. Your clean and dry glassware in your drawer is not dry enough. The glass has a high affinity for water molecules, which will adhere to its surface as an invisible layer. As soon as you have removed the glassware from the oven, assemble the apparatus as shown in your lab manual. Obtain a 4.5 cm length of magnesium ribbon and scrape both sides of the ribbon with the side of a spatula to remove any coating of magnesium oxide which may be present. Handle the magnesium with tweezers to minimize the transfer of moisture from your hands. Weigh the strip of magnesium and cut it down until it weighs about 0.04 grams. Record the actual weight that you will be using. Be sure to use sharp scissors to cut the strip into tiny sections no bigger than 2 millimeters, letting the pieces fall directly into a dry beaker or onto a clean, dry piece of notebook paper. Detach the 5 milliliter conical vial from the assembled apparatus and transfer the magnesium pieces to the vial. Place the dry spin vein in the vial and reattach the vial to the apparatus, being sure to center it above the stirrer. While you've been assembling your apparatus and adding the magnesium, a small amount of water will have entered. You should flush your apparatus with an inert gas such as nitrogen or argon using the gas lines prepared for you in the hood. You can confirm the gentle flow rate and check that the needle is not clogged by placing the needle from the gas line into a beaker of acetone. Push the needle of the gas line through the septum and allow the gas to flow through the reaction vial for one minute. After you have flushed your apparatus, remove the needle from the septum. Next, pour your anhydrous diethyl ether into an oven-dried 12 milliliter screw-capped centrifuge tube until the tube is about halfway full and immediately cap the tube. You will be using this tube to store your dry ether during the course of this experiment. During the experiment, remove the ether from the tube with an oven-dried pasture pipette. When not in use, you should immediately cap the tube. It is important to minimize your exposure of this solvent to moisture in the air. In addition, solvent-grade ether should not be used because it contains water. Next, use an automatic pipette to measure 0.17 milliliters of bromobenzene into a pre-weighed capped 3 milliliter conical vial. Cap and reweigh the vial to determine the weight of the material transferred. Add 1 milliliter of anhydrous ether to the vial using an oven-dried pipette. After the bromobenzene and ether have been thoroughly mixed, draw 0.2 milliliters of the solution into the syringe and insert the syringe needle through the rubber septum of the setup containing the magnesium. Remember that it is important to recap the 3 milliliter conical vial with either a Teflon stopper or a screw cap at all times, even after you have emptied the vial. Begin stirring your magnesium while you deliver the 0.2 milliliters of bromobenzene solution from the syringe to the magnesium in the vial. Stir the mixture gently, trying to avoid throwing the magnesium onto the sides of the vial. The evolution of bubbles from the surface of the magnesium serves as an indication that the reaction is starting. It may be necessary to heat the mixture using very low heat on the hot plate. Remember, ether has a low boiling point of 35 degrees Celsius and you do not want it to boil away. Once the bubbling has started, the apparatus should be removed from the heat and the bubbling should continue on its own. After the reaction has started, in addition to the bubbles, you should observe the formation of a brownish-gray cloudy solution. Continue stirring and add the remaining solution of bromobenzene slowly over a period of five minutes. When all of the bromobenzene solution has been added, perform a quantitative transfer by adding 0.5 milliliters of anhydrous ether to the vial that originally contained the bromobenzene solution, drawing it into the syringe and adding to the ether reaction mixture. Continue to stir the mixture and allow it to cool to room temperature. After it is cooled, your Grignard reagent is ready for the synthesis of triphenylmethanol. Begin by preparing a solution of 0.27 grams of benzophenone and 0.5 milliliters of anhydrous ether Cap the vial and shake to dissolve all of the benzophenone. Keep the vial cap until the Grignard reagent has been prepared and cooled to room temperature. Using the same syringe which has been used for the bromobenzene solution, draw the benzophenone solution into the syringe. Add the solution to the stirred Grignard reagent as rapidly as possible, but not so rapidly that the solution boils away. Rinse the vial that contained the benzophenone solution with about 0.2 milliliters of anhydrous ether and add it to the mixture. This reaction should be allowed to continue for 15 minutes. Continue stirring and allow the mixture to cool back to room temperature. 
As the adduct is formed, the solution turns pink and gradually solidifies. After a while, there may be too much solid present for the spin vein to stir. When this happens, remove the syringe and septum and stir the mixture with a microspatula. The vial can now be simply capped, with the rest of the apparatus being set aside. With the occasional stirring, let the vial sit at room temperature for the remainder of the 15 minutes of reaction time to allow for the complete formation of the adduct. Keep the vial capped when the contents are not being stirred in order to prevent unnecessary contact with water vapor. Obtain 1.5 milliliters of 6 molar hydrochloric acid and add it dropwise to the adduct to neutralize the reaction mixture while also stirring occasionally. Neutralization reactions are exothermic, so if you add the HCl too quickly, it will cause your ether to boil over and you will lose product. The hydrochloric acid will convert the adduct to triphenylmethanol and inorganic compounds. Add additional ether as needed to maintain an ether volume of 3 milliliters. Towards the end of the addition of the aqueous acid solution, you should notice two distinct liquid phases. The upper ether layer will contain triphenylmethanol and the lower aqueous layer will contain the inorganic compounds. Make sure that you have two distinct liquid phases before separating the layers. Remove the magnetic spin vein and rinse it into the vial with a little ether. Draw off the lower aqueous phase with a pasture pipette and place it into another conical vial. Remember to save the ether layer in the first vial because it contains the triphenylmethanol product. Add 0.5 milliliters of ether to the aqueous phase in the second vial, cap the vial, and shake it. Remove the lower aqueous phase from this vial. Combine the remaining ether phase with the first ether extract and transfer the combined layers into a clean centrifuge tube with a fresh pasture pipette. Dry the ether solution with anhydrous sodium sulfate. Allow the drying reagent to work for at least five minutes. Transfer the dried ether solution into a small Erlenmeyer flask, leaving the drying agent behind in the centrifuge tube. Rinse the drying agent with more diethyl ether into the Erlenmeyer. Evaporate the solvent under a gentle stream of air in a hood by gently heating the flask. Once the solvent has evaporated, there should be a brown-yellow solid left in the flask. This crude mixture contains triphenylmethanol mixed with the byproduct biphenyl. Remove the biphenyl by adding 1 milliliter of petroleum ether. Warm the flask with your hand and stir to ensure mixing. Finally, cool the mixture. Once the mixture is cooled to room temperature, collect the triphenylmethanol by vacuum filtration on a Hirsch funnel into a teared 25 milliliter filter flask and rinse it with small portions of petroleum ether. Weigh the crude triphenylmethanol. Evaporate the petroleum ether which is passed into the filter flask and re-weigh the flask to determine the mass of the biphenyl. Use isopropyl alcohol to recrystallize your alcohol product using a clean and teared filter flask for your vacuum filtration. Collect the crystals and let them air dry, then weigh them. Weigh your filter flask and then evaporate off the solvent that passed into the filter flask. Reweigh the filter flask to determine the mass of triphenylmethanol lost during recrystallization. Finally, analyze your pure triphenylmethanol by either melting point or hydrogen NMR.